Meridia's brilliance. A strange storm has devastated the area around Kilcreath Temple. Now the priests of the temple want my help to find the priests and pilgrims that were lost in the storm. I found three pe the three people that priest Bavian sent me in search of. Now I should meet her at the pilgrim's lodge west of the temple and tell her of their fates. Okay. Um. No, we're not going to be able to ride the horse, let's be honest here. Ooh. I didn't expect the dog to join. Woo. Oh. There we go. And those ones are just standing over there? Okay. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Just, uh... Leisurely walking here. Nothing to see. Nothing to see. Looks like there's some more. Okay, we're right in front of the lodge, so we're in the right area. Woo! That, um, this, what is it called? This one, nope. Scorch. It takes like a little while. Okay, it says three seconds. It feels like it takes a really long time, but it does some good damage. Like it says it only does 4,800 compared to Dive's 4,100, but it's pretty good. Oh, they do it again. That's why. So, but yeah, I like that one. I like all of our skills so far. I think that Warden, oh, Warden is a really great class. Okay, in we go. To the lodge. Hopefully they're not vampires too. Um, while we loot the things first. Solitude bedtime stories. Nilkus and the snowy saber cat. One day, a young boy named Nilkus went out to do some ice fishing. He walked very far, and as he walked, a storm blew up around him. Soon, the snow was falling too heavily for Nilkus to see. He decided to wait out the blizzard in a nearby cave. While he waited, he heard a deep growl, and a snowy saber cat emerged from the white fog of the storm. It gave a mighty roar and entered the cave. Nilkus was terrified. He had no weapons capable of fighting such a mighty beast. He braced himself for an attack as the cat roared and growled. Then, Nilkus noticed the snowy saber cat was limping. When he looked closer, he saw a large thorn in the cat's paw. Gathering all of his courage, instead of running from the beast, he moved closer and extracted the thorn. The snowy saber cat roared in pain, but then relief swept through it as the agony receded. The thankful cat licked Nilkus' face and hands, then curled up beside him. Later, when the storm was still too dangerous for Nilkus to venture out, the cat left and brought back game for the two to share in the warmth and safety of the cave. When the storm cleared, Nilkus and the cat emerged from the cave. From then on, they traveled together and remained lifelong friends. That's so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Never talk to strangers. Never talk to reachmen. They'll eat you in the middle of the night. They'll eat you in the night. Okay. Don't know why I added middle. <laughs> Never talk to Easterners, they only want to fight. Don't say hello to orcs, they always seem to smell. Some people pop up in the background, kind of scared me. Don't say hello to red guards, all they do is curse and yell. Never speak with elves, they are aloof and brusque and very rude. Never speak with imperials, they only want to share their foul mood. Don't make friends with Argonians, they're cold and sweat and slimy. Don't make friends with Khajiit, they'll take anything that's shiny. Never talk to Bretons, they're just as bad as elves. Never talk to strangers, we Nords must keep to ourselves. That's a really awful um, children's story. The Jarl's New Robes 
There once was a Jarl who was incredibly vain. He loved his fine clothes more than anything in the world, and often neglected his duties in favor of finding and purchasing new outfits. One day, two skeeving criminals calling themselves tailors made their way to the hold. This is obviously like the Emperor's new clothes. <laughs> they told the Jarl that they could weave him exquisite clothes in the most beautiful colors and designs. The clothes they made were so spectacular, in fact, that they would be invisible to both fools and anyone unfit for the position they held. <laughs> the Jarl insisted the tailors make him a fine outfit as quickly as possible. One fit for a Jarl. He paid them handsomely and the two of them set to work. In reality, the tailors did no work at all. They asked for splendid materials like silver weave and spider silk but merely took them for themselves, and continued to pretend they were hard at work. They asked for sweet rolls and pies, and slept in lavish beds in the Jarl's longhouse, while they tended to toil pretended to toil away. Words. <laughs> Eventually, the Jarl asked how long his how his clothes were coming along. He sent his house carl <laughs> to check on the tailors. When the house carl arrived, the tailors were working at empty tables. She wondered how this could be possible. The tailors asked if she liked the clothes, and if she thought the colors were beautiful. The house carl remembered that only fools and those unfit for their post could not see the clothes. She did not think herself either, so she lied and told the tailors the clothes were the most beautiful she'd ever seen. She reported back to the Jarl and assured him clothes were fine indeed. The Jarl sent the court mage and his steward to check as well. <laughs> the two of them saw nothing either, but pretended they did. They assured the Jarl the outfit was spectacular. Soon, the tailors announced their work was complete. The Jarl went to see for himself. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, good job, music. <laughs> when he arrived, he was shocked to, f to find he saw nothing at all. Shocked to find he saw nothing at all. The tailors displayed the empty table and asked him if he was pleased with the result. Did he like the design? The breathtaking colors? The Jarl, to admit, too afraid to admit the truth, told the tailors he adored the clothes and would wear them straight away. <laughs> Just digging himself in a deeper hole. He undressed and let the tailors pantomime the act of putting his new clothes on him. They were meticulous and even secured the imaginary robe around his neck before they finished. So the Jarl was obviously not wearing clothes, too ashamed to admit this. They all fawned over him, acting like he looked fantastic. <laughs> the tailors insisted the Jarl go out to the hold. He was incredibly naked the whole time. A child stepped out of the crowd and boldly exclaimed the Jarl is naked. <laughs> the crowd stopped pretending. They began to laugh and point. The Jarl, mortified, went back to his long house. But the two so-called tailors were already gone. Oh goodness. So he uh, punished all of his court for his insolence. Okay, let's, let's talk to Priest Bobian. I feel like Ivina can't hear me. She's standing Ooh. right here, but she's gone. That acolyte, she's just like Priest Serena at the stables. Is this what would have happened to all of us if I hadn't gotten the others into the cave? I tried to heal Ivina, but Meridia's light had no effect. But what was that about Priest oh, no. in the stables? I found the people you sent me for. Yolt is safe, Rolig Moff is dead, and the other... <laughs> Is like poor Ivina. Oh. We must find High Priest Varkor. I guess we're gonna head up to the temple. Shall we? Yeah, she's completely. Yikes. Future vampires? Okay. We need to find High Priest Varkor. Let's head to the temple. All right. Immediately, the Death Hounds and stuff are all already back. Do we have to protect her? Oh.
No, wrong button. Heavy armor increase, not bad, not bad. Jeez. Okay. So I think we have to protect her. Up we go. Oh gosh. Oh, I did not hold that long enough. Ah. Where's the other one? Oh, there he is. I blocked that. That was very unkind. All right, is there anything up here? More vampires. Great. A book. That's a long book. Kind, leader of the gods. Um, disturbed by Alduin. Okay, so our gods are cyclical. Dead god, Shorin Sun. Hearth gods, Kind, Mara, Debella, Stun, and Junal. Which Junal is, um, Julianos. Um, uh, yeah. Why I begin every servant in the service in the temple with a prayer to praise Alduin, followed by a prayer to keep him at bay. May your slumber stretch on for a thousand generations. Interesting. Let's well, OG Skyrim urn right there. All right. Um. So I think we actually are gonna. You're gonna interact with these ones just because they're right here. Oops. Whoa! I did not mean to press that. At times, the buttons become a bit mashy. <laughs> Oh, we leveled up to level six. Let's get our rewards for that. We got three soul gems and a crown experience scroll. Awesome. Let's equip. Oh, we have a point. So we have passives. We have which passives should we go for? We said we're going to do passives. So bond with nature. That's a good one. We'll do that one. Anytime one uh, bond with nature one. Anytime one of your animal companion skills ends, you are healed for 300, 630 health. That's good. So we got that at what nine? Eight. Okay. So we might get the green balance accelerated growth passive. Okay, major mending. Interesting. Uh, we do want to equip. Equip. We want to use that crown experience scroll. Fifty percent experience point bonus from all sources for two hours. Pauses when you're offline. All that jazz. So let's talk to Priest Bavian. Oh, Ivina. I pray that the high priest can remove this strange affliction. I just hope we don't find more victims of this unnatural storm as we head toward the temple. I hope not. Okay, she didn't have anything particularly insightful. By Meridia's life. Other? So many dead. How could Meridia Please. let this happen? Go away. Faithful? Yeah, I think it's kind of peculiar. Considering she's like she hates death so much. Recently, um, recently being, being last night, I watched the Fudge Muppet video on 
YouTube video on the Elder Kings 2, the mod for Crusader Kings 3, and it seems amazing, and I want to play it Monsters so much. Holy place. We need to find the temple priests. Okay. Um, and I really, really want to play it. So, a priest has completely turned into a hero fiend. That is a shame. Oh no. Take his meridian medallion so we can remember his sacrifice. Okay. So, up. How do we get up? Ah! <laughs> the staircase! Who would have thought? Not me, apparently. Not me. So we have... That. That's not where we want to go. So it's not that stairwell. Maybe... It's not up here. It can't be. Death Hound? Rat? Centipede? Um... I don't... know where we're supposed to go, actually. So it's not that stairway. Maybe we do go back this way. Okay. Oh. Okay, that's not searchable. Okay, here we go. We're on the right path now. Hopefully. Hopefully. It always surprises me, like seeing the um, health bars for like the insects. I don't know why. It's always like, huh? Because I think it's an enemy. Oh, animal companions at 10. Pretty nice. We do not need that maple shield. Like, oh, it's an enemy. Nope, it's just a spider. Skeever? Oh. There we go. Okay. That hero fiend was very feral. They all just are very feral when they're in the harrow fiend state. Very fiendish, unsurprisingly. We must find the others. I'm working on it, lady. Oh. Okay. Bit overkill. Bit overkill. Morizu. Morizu gave me no choice, Bobby. 